Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Terratech. And on this episode, we are finally going to be playing one of the new patches. I say finally because any of you who watch some of my other videos will know that uh, I've been having a few uh, computer problems here and there. But we're back. We're finally going to play this new patch. Uh, in fact, they've actually come out with one more patch since then. And I'll go ahead and read this to you. It's early access update 0 0.5.12 and, of course, 0 0.5.13. Uh, but the, the 12 one is the big one. That's the one we were waiting for for quite a long time. It says, important notes, start new game saves. So the old game saves will no longer work. Uh, you know, you can still play them, but uh, the, well, actually it may even sound like maybe they won't work at all. But in the past, you could still play them. You just wouldn't get at the benefits of all the new stuff that they've kind of incorporated into the game. Or at least you wouldn't get some of them. Like some of the updates would go back and some of them wouldn't. Uh, this one makes it sound like you don't really have much of a choice. You need to start a new save game. So that's what we're going to do. You are also now limited by which blocks can be found in the population for GSO. Not based on size, but on how far you have progressed through the missions and which corporate license you hold. The license UI and messaging will get better right now. It is hard to tell when you gain new licenses. All Venture and Geocore blocks are unrestricted for now. So it sounds like they've actually added the whole um, concept of having licenses and being able to upgrade those and, and progress through those depending on how you build your bot and which blocks you use and things of that sort. So it's going to be interesting to see how they've incorporated that in there and whether you know we really like that feature or not. Uh, I have a lot of high hopes for that. A new feature slash content slash improvements, new progression and licensing systems added, new base blocks and crafting recipes added, Added new trading station boss mission. So there's a boss mission now. Encountered a new public trading station base that can be used by any tech. Is indestructible and allows players to deliver chunks, earn money, and purchase items. Kind of like what we had before with the uh, with the uh, uh, terminal. Um, I can't even think of the name of it now anymore. But uh, we had a terminal you could buy. So payload to uh, studio terminal. That's right. Added missions to teach about delivering items to trading stations or using the player's own delivery cannon. Let's see, added harvester boss mission. A quest log has been added, so there's new quests. That's kind of cool, or quest in general, because we never had quests to begin with. Fabricators now display available recipes when one or more blocks are added. Various performance optimizations, so maybe a little bit less lag when it comes to uh, multiple blocks being on the screen. Something we did run into quite a bit as you progress towards the uh, higher end of the game. We also have uh, performance for click and play. Distance is now reduced to low quality settings. Let's go up to the top. I, I promise we're going to get to the game here pretty soon, guys. Just wanted to go over the new features they've added. Uh, the new update after that added five enemy mini base encounters, which appearing during GSO Grade 1. Restored animation to Solar Generator. Added new experience or EXP ground clearing wheel. Added new GSO large delivery cannon. Filters can now filter by item type as well as specific items uh, right mouse button wheel. Okay, so let's uh, searching for game. Game saves from 0.5.11 and earlier will no longer work with version 0.5.12 onwards. So you don't even have a choice. It, it looks at your old save games and see, and I can tell you right off the bat, you can't play those anymore. So we are going to have to go with a new one. Set the game mode to story or R&D test chamber by clicking on the left or right arrows. Uh, you know, we don't have the, the R&D on this one, but I guess that's cool. You would think, you know, why not have the R&D on the outside with all the other menus? What kind of put it in here when you say start the story mode? I'm not quite sure on that one, but... Uh, we're going to skip Twitter for now. We'll add that later because I don't feel like going in there and putting all the information in uh, that I don't know right off the bat. I wish I, I should really keep that in my memory, but uh, I don't really sign into Twitter all that often. So <laughs> it's not one of those I, I have dedicated in there. Only so much space to go around, guys. Okay, let's see. How does it, How's it going to start? Is it going to be the same thing as before? Mm, you can hear. Oh, there we go. GSA Base Deployment Unit B57981. Attention! Payload failure on survey mission Alpha 748005. Crash landing imminent. Initiate emergency salvage protocol. Brace, brace, brace. Oh, God. Every time I see that, there's no way. Yeah, even if we're designed to go that way, I just can't see us surviving that. 
Whew. Your cab is a bit banged up, but you made it. This is your cab. Protect it at all cost. Okay. Drag a standard block to the back of the cab using the left mouse button. So this is how you move everything around. Second mouse button spins it around the cab. They're just giving you a little basic tutorial right here for those of you guys who've never played this before. And we're going to go through each and every little thing because this is uh, a pretty big change. So for people who just come into the game now uh, who want to know like how do you do things, I'm going to go through it all step by step. So if you hover over an item, a block, a piece of will, a uh, weapon, whatever the case may be, you'll see a little box will pop up. It says regular GSO block for constructing the basic structure of a tech. It gives you a... a, a I guess a little bit more of a description than just a name. Now, a lot of the time, it doesn't really tell you specifically what it's supposed to do, but it does give you an idea. So what we're going to do is left-click on it and drag it. You can drag it to any one of the, the spots on the, the bot that has a little red dot. That's where you can connect things to it. Now, some blocks will connect to some blocks, like this right here. Now it has a red, block, a red dot on the front of the cab, which it didn't have before for this other block right here. So... If I could take that off, which I cannot, and I probably can't click this one on. Nope, yeah, because it's just a, it's a tutorial, so it's not letting me move stuff around where I kind of wanted to go. Let's see, uh, GSO Little Trekker Wheel. Dinky wheels, but they turn and will still better than the big than their big brothers. Okay, well, so they get a little bit more turning and a little bit more uh, mobility, whereas the big ones will give you more speed and they can carry more weight. Nice. Now attach all the wheels to the sides. Grab this gu the gun and stick it on top. Well, this is a GSO ZK-47 light machine gun. If we hover over it, it should give us a little description right here. This handy weapon has been a reliable favorite uh, for over 200 years and still going strong. If you move your cursor over it in time, you can actually scroll down over here and read the rest. The ZK-47, also known as the Kempovar, is a gas-operated assault rifle developed for the Galactic Survey Organization by a Sergeant Peter Kempton Bass. A reclusive mechanic genius, Kempton Bass began his professional life as a tortured artist and inventor. At the outbreak of the first Gamma Quadrant War, GQW-1, Kempton Bass joined the Stellar Royal Marines Commando's Regiment. During the conflict, uh, Bass notched up over 300 confirmed kills and more, most Sources suggest lost his mind after the war. He retired to his undersea lair and began tinkering on various projects to keep himself amused. The ZK-47 was originally created whilst trying to find a low-cost alternative to text messages. His plan, what in the world? His plan was to etch the message on a small piece of metal and to launch said message pallet towards the recipient at a high speed. Unfortunately, most recipients, recipients, recipients typically expired upon receipt of the message. However, the GSO, in his wisdom, saw other applications for the Kemp Kavat. Even after two centuries, I'm sure I'm butchering that name, by the way, guys. The, the model and its various uh, remains the most popular and widely used assault rifle in the universe because of the reliability, low product cost, availability, and ease of use. Holy crap, that is a long description. I did not mean to get that much into it, but this was never here before. This description, uh, not on the item the last time. Uh, I looked at it, and I usually check these things out. That is a really long description, kind of interesting, and it adds something to the story. But I don't know if it should be on the description of the gun. Maybe in the, maybe if you got like a a diary or a journal or something where you can go into the menu and see the storyline of of stuff, you know, like they do in Mass Effect, where you can go in there and and hear them talk to you and stuff. So, yeah, that that was interesting, but wow, that's pretty long. Nearly done. Grab the drill and stick it to the front. It's a GSO mini drill. A mini drill, this is a great starter drill for any buddy, er, budding off-worlder prospector. Now, the drill will destroy trees and rocks and things of that sort, but it will not destroy the resources that pop out of those. When you destroy a tree, uh, it usually breaks up into three or four pieces. I think it's four pieces. Uh, I may be wrong on that. It may be only three, but when it breaks up, if your sh weapon is shooting, you have a chance of destroying it. When I shoot this weapon right here, you'll see bullets pop off and the shells pop out. They have a chance of not only destroying the tree, but the resources. These drills do not. They only have a chance of destroying the tree or the rock. It will not destroy any of the resources. Uh, at least that's the whole idea behind them. If I guess if you run up right to it, you may still be able to do it, but I don't think you are. 
Uh, you've reassembled your basic tech. Now tap B to release from the build beam. Now I always change mine around just for comfort, but you're welcome to use whatever button you want. Check your system. Use the uh, WASD keys or the arrow keys, whichever ones you have it set up to. Uh, I do believe you can even plug in a control, uh, you know, a, like an Xbox 360 controller or something to this, although I've never tried that. Okay, now hold down the weapons spacebar to fire your gun. As you can see, this is what it looks like when you fire. Oh, a rival prospector has come to raid your landing site. Now, be careful when you shoot this guy because you want those pieces. And there we go. Am I even hitting him? Oh, holy crap. Uh, I was hitting him. He's supposed to flash. When he, when he gets hurt, he's supposed to start flashing. I didn't see any flashing going on there. So we're going to pick up these pieces. This is how you get bigger. This is how you design your bot. Uh, and eventually uh, become big and bad. Now this back wheel right here, I haven't really talked too much about it. It's a GSO stabilizing wheel. A small stabilizing wheel used to prop up top heavy techs. I'm going to put these wheels on because they will disappear after a certain amount of time. But the main reason behind it is uh, you could get attacked very, very easily and very quickly right after already destroying one. So it says that column of smoke might be from part of your bomb base. And you can see a little green, or not green, but yellow a question mark have uh, shown up on your screen right there. You also, in the top right-hand corner, will notice you have a compass. If, as I turn to my right, it will show that I'm pointing north. As I turn over here, I'm pointing away from north. And now we have something different up here in our top left corner, something I've never seen be so before. You did have your cache up here. The BB is your cache. You could take pictures. But this little bar right here, the GSO uh, level 1, 100 out of 750, this was not here before. And I actually just got a little bit of experience from killing that other tech. So that might be the way you level. Uh, having these guys' uh, material on your bot while you're fighting may add to it. I think it probably will. Uh, we also got a new weapon here. You'll see that these weapons will fire differently. This is the GSO narrow gauge coil laser and it does look like there's going to be a little bit of reading here guys so if you don't want to hear that you're more than welcome to skip past it but I'm going to check it out because I like the story I like finding out what they have uh, in store for us and and what you know they took the effort to write and I, I want to see it you know and maybe some of you guys don't but hopefully you do uh, because we're about to read it right here now so it says small pew 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 lasers uh, guns you'll need a few of them to make an impact Professor Yum of the Personal Technology Institute P-Tech I-USA happen upon the the narrow coil or narrow gauge coil laser technology whilst attempting to pioneer a range of ion laser cookery ovens. Uh, cookery ovens. The idea was to develop a faster method of cooking than conventional microwave ovens. Early tests were plagued with mishaps as the food began heated uh, had a habit of charging with unstable kinetic energy in one case yum reportedly threw a piece of bacon at a target after exposure the bacon turned red in the air and summarily exploded upon impact the tech what a waste of bacon the technology has since been repurposed for the defense industry after a significant reduction in power holy crap man the way they they come up with these ideas for these weapons being created is kind of funny but you'll see this one fires as a laser very straight and it actually goes pretty far it runs out of energy before it actually tilts down so it, it will shoot where you're aiming if it can reach whereas this other one is a bullet and it's affected by gravity so when it fires it actually has an arc it faces uh you know it kind of goes forward a little bit and then comes back down so you need to take that into account when putting your weapons on multiple layers that they do have a personality all their own and they also have damage all their own some do better damage than others uh, which is useful depending on what you're trying to do with it uh, again when I fire these resources uh, when I destroy this tree let's see there you go you get four resources from it if I pull back just a little and use my weapon you'll see that it should destroy these things there we go so it's destroying it because it's hitting it whereas if I walk up here or not walk up but drive up and you'll see that my drill is on it when I hit my weapon my drill will be spinning the drill will damage whatever's there and yet it's not doing any damage to it because that's what it's made for and I'll even show you I'll move this off in the back I'll uh, use the scroll wheel to turn it sideways you can go all the way around 360 degrees but I just want to come up here and use the drill running into things will damage it as well but if I walk up and sit right there on it oh okay come on little buddy now he is supposed to flash red and he is not flashing red even though he's exploding that 
is probably something they're going to have to fix. Uh, or maybe they meant it to be that way now. It was definitely not that way before. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is when you find new items that you have not discovered before, just by picking them up and putting them on your bot, that will give you access to buy them later on. So highly suggest if it's a new item, even if you don't need it, just pick it up, put it on your bot, take it off your bot, and throw it down on the ground. Uh, you're fine. A basic stud style fixture light it won't be it won't shine very far but it doesn't cost much either now light uh, as you can see later on in the game we'll have a, a night and day cycle here and depending on how much uh, light you have it may be a little bit easier to get around it also creates massive lag I would highly suggest unless you got a really good computer and you're not really running into lag issues uh, probably to stay away from that and the more weapons you have that's going to add lag too but overall it's really like the lights that you see the huge difference on what does that guy have does that guy have anything good you could try him and you'll see that your weapons kind of already like will auto aim towards the enemy some weapons do that some weapons do not the enemies have a habit of finding where your weak point is and just kind of sitting there you can see that he's trying to target the back of me because i really don't have any weapons back there oh we got a new weapon here. Let's go ahead and turn it uh, this way. So now this guy has no weapons. There's absolutely nothing he can do to hurt me. But I can sit here and take my time to destroy him, which will allow me to get the the most out of him. Like if I destroy, if I shoot him too many times, I could hit the blocks that I really want. And as you can see, when he explodes, the explosion will be so much bigger uh, if you sit there and just completely and totally go to town on him. Let's see. We're gonna pick up this other will. Put the stabilizing wheel on the back and this light we don't really need because we've already discovered it and we really don't need more of them. Do got another stabilizing wheel there? Kind of want to take it just in case uh, later on when I have more blocks, uh, you know, I can add that there in the back when I when I expand a little bit. So let's come over here and get our first little set of uh, base items. This is going to be the solar generator. It even says there is your solar generator. It makes free electricity when anchored. Drop or drag and drop it with the left mouse button to choose an anchored location. So if you want to pick it up, again, you just drag it over your bot. You can put it on your bot, or you can see as you move it around the ground, it will literally attach to the ground. We're going to go ahead and attach to this because this is going to be something you're going to need right away. The other base pieces, I would suggest waiting until you've uh, had a little bit of time uh, to to pick all this stuff up rather than always putting it down when it tells you to. The repair bubble projector needs power. Okay, now attached to the solar generator. So we're going to go ahead and attach this uh, this new little thing that we got, which is a GSO repair bubble projector. It's a repair bubble. It will repair damage blocks if powered up. And, of course, it gets powered up through the solar panel. And the solar panel only works during daylight, guys. Obviously, it's uh, a good starting solar generator. It will convert sunlight into electricity whilst anchored, but becomes overburdened easily. It just means it doesn't produce a lot of energy. So if you're trying to do multiple things with it, such as shield generators and things of that sort, uh, it may not be able to keep up with all of it. But this is something uh, is incredibly useful. In fact, we're going to move up our weapons a little bit. Uh, that way we can have, uh, you know what? I guess what we could do here is attach that right there put that over here and that will allow me to take this wheel and put it on the back it however will kind of block uh, the back of my bot from being able to damage or shoot in that direction which kind of sucks and because the enemies know that that might be a place they target now I could always put a weapon over here and just point it in the back that might be a viable solution to try at the very least and I think we might do that although I really hate to do that in fact what I end up doing is putting this in here. I like to protect that stuff. Yeah, that's, these are hard to find and they're really expensive. If they get destroyed, you're going to regret it. And it's you may not even be able to recover from it. It's that difficult. So, in fact, I think we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. If you do enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe definitely helps, uh, helps grow the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you guys will look forward to more of these because we are playing on the new game. And I am kind of psyched to see where it's going to go and what's going to happen when we reach this number two mark. I think we'll probably do that on the next episode. But uh, we'll have to see because that's going to... I can't wait. I really can't. It's going to be awesome. So, again, guys, thanks for watching. And I will definitely catch you next time.